Uh, yeah, so I should mention somewhere in the 90s, I hung out a shingle and said, hey, if you're having these weird experiences, I'll talk to you about them and I won't even take a donation for that. And when you hold, keep that shingle out for 25 years and also write a book that becomes something of a cult classic and have a forum with you know over 10,000 people on it talking about these experiences and all that stuff, which I founded about 15 years ago with a guy named Vince Horn. When you do that, you, you get to, before you know it, become an accidental expert in the weird, right? So like, so that was the thing. And then um, how we got in this situation is actually really complicated. And it depends on how far you want to go back. But you could probably go back to, to Rene Descartes and Galileo. And, you know, if you want to go back that far, but certainly Newton. And then basically in the Age of Enlightenment, there was this notion of the clockwork universe. And with, through that was through Newton and through Galileo and some people that followed Newton. And then through Galileo, there was the thing, the only real things are things that you can measure. And this obviously, there wasn't an external way to measure it. Now we're starting to have some neuroimaging tech to at least see some neural correlates and some things change when people do interesting things for their consciousness and all that through fMRI and EEG and other methods. And so, um, and, but, but, you know, the age of enlightenment, which is ironically named, um, basically right. <laughs> ended up, you know, reacting against the sort of curious religious things of the time and said, no reason, science, measurement, mathematics, and, and put its faith in those things. And a lot of amazing things came out of that, right? You have physics and chemistry and biology and biochemistry and, and a lot of cool medical technologies and other great engineering innovations came out of what resulted from that paradigm. So it's not like it didn't have its points, but it's also clearly only part of the story. And so, um, so, and that all really came to a head with the logical positivists in the 1920s ish or so, which were basically like fervent materialists. And, you know, and then with the behavioralist under BF Skinner, who basically said consciousness is basically an illusion. You're just a robotic automaton responding purely to conditions. Um, you have no free will and all of those kinds of paradigms. Um, and even Freud, who was fascinated by things like dreams, was very not into spiritual stuff and thought it was all just neurotic or psychotic. And so um, there's lots of other reasons for it. There the are other might be developmental. So people who haven't crossed into this territory opening like myself um, before yeah. and even after I had those openings. So I was still kind of a fervent materialist even after I traveled out of my body. That's pretty weird to have that kind of, you know, um, strange relationship to these things. And, um, and so the scientific conditioning and the, 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 the conditioning of our cultures and our tribes, like, you know, or my academic tribe was like, you know, sort of sciencey geeks. Right. And so, you know, they thought, and, and I, I was, even as I started to have spiritual experiences, I was very com uncomfortable with the language around those or some of the weirdness of the traditions around those or the cultures around those. I didn't like any of that to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I ended up finding those things super useful anyway, eventually a lot of cool frameworks and technologies and maps and tricks and tips that have been developed within those traditions that it turned out to be super pragmatically useful. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is interesting. I think, um, I think what's exciting that what you're touching upon is, is, or, or why this is such an interesting time to do what you're doing and kind of help usher in this paradigm shift is there is just a higher percentage of people out there that are going through these experiences. Like it our system seem so. needs, needs to change. Like sometimes I wonder, am I just in like a spirituality echo chamber because I am deep in the spirituality path or is there actually an objective higher percentage of people that are having uh, ex expanded consciousness experiences relative to the kind of, you know, 3D world that we live in. Um, and sometimes it's hard to tell. Thank you for checking out this clip. If you want to see the full episode, you can do so by going up here. I hope you have a wonderful day.